Welcome back guys to the fourth episode of Glide. So today we're going to be working on the level selection menu and also the navigation in between the different menus we have. So if you guys remember, we've made this main menu right here. All the buttons are responsive. And on this side here, we've made the shop. However, there's no way to go over to the shop right now as uh, the camera doesn't pan out that way. So we're going to be working on the third um, the third add-on to our menu right here, that's going to be the level selection. And we're going to make sure we can actually go from one to the other without any problem. So everything is going to be done today in the menu scene, so let's open it up and have a look at what we need. We are going to need two new fields up here, two new public fields. The first one being public transform level panel. So this one is going to be containing um, all the little levels inside of it. We're also going to need something else, so a massive container for all our three menus. That is going to be a rank transform. So public rank transform menu container. Now we're going to have to uh, go back to our Unity and actually create another level um, of children's inside of our canvas to have this work. But it is going to work in the end. Um, there's one more thing we're going to need as well, a private vector 3 desired menu position. This is actually going to be needed because we want to have a smoothing in between um, our transition. And having another flow that keeps track of where exactly to go is going to allow us to create that nice and smooth um, transition in between menus. So if we head down over here to the start function, we are going to be adding another section right here in the start. And it's going to be the add, uh, well, the initialize level. So what we're going to be doing here is add buttons on click event. To the level to levels so what's going to happen in here is the exact same thing as the shop so using our level panel we are going to be iterating through every single children in there and then just assign a, uh, a function to it so the function is gonna be taking care of that is called init level of course it has not been created just yet so let's go down here manually just input it just beneath the initialize shop so private void init level and like I said, it's pretty much the same exact thing as the initialize shop. So I'll just be pulling this one. And uh, let's grab those first line over here. Let's make sure we duplicate them in there. So just make sure we've assigned a reference. That stays the same, but we're going to be removing this one. And we're going to say level panel. So if level panel is equal to null, then we have not assigned the level panel in the inspector. So for every single children under our level panel, find the button and add the unclick event. So that works right here. We do for each transform T in level panel. We keep that, we keep that, everything is fine. Um, however, here we're gonna be changing this for on level select. Now, of course, this function is not created. So we're gonna go down and again, just like we did last, last episode on level select int current index. And here we go. So we just created a flow again um, however, of course, it's not working right now since we do not have a level panel, we do not have those references, but at least now the code um, is linked together. So before we take a small break uh, coding right now, we're going to do a debug.log in here, just the typical debug.log that we have, uh, selecting level and then let's do plus button index, or sorry, current index. Alright, so we have this here, now let's take a small pause of the code and we're going to head over to the engine and start creating the level menu. So I'm going to duplicate over the main menu again, not the fade, only the main menu. Let's call this level menu and let's just put it one step above the fade. We're going to be taking the left here and putting that on minus 1280 and the right is going to be 1280. In the level menu, I'll get rid of pretty much everything actually and make sure I do, um, I create a new panel and that's going to be my level panel. In here, I am simply going to create a lot of buttons. So let's just do button, let's create a new button, make it look like an actual level selection button. So let's do 150 by 150, change the sprite for, let's go for uh, one empty. And we're going to leave the text in here. That's going to be for uh, which level this is. So this one is going to be level one. Maybe increment the font size to something big. So maybe 50. Make it bold. And here we go. So that's the first button. Let's also assign a highlight state since we're here. Click on button, change to sprite swap. 
and the highlighted sprite is going to be too empty. All right. So that's level one. Let's make sure we duplicate it. Oh, actually, let's just call it level like this. And then we can duplicate it and just move it around. So that's going to be level two, three, four, five. Now, the ideal way to go about this, the one I had uh, originally in my mind, but I don't have the artistic skill to do it, is to actually have um, a map in the background, just like an image that draws some kind of map. And then you can just place those dots over certain images or certain specific area in your images. But since I do not actually have that image and I can't really draw it since uh, I'm not too good at drawing, I'm simply going to be placing those randomly around the map just like this. So we end up with a total of six levels here. Of course, if you want more, you can put more. I'm going to change the text in every single one of them. So that's two, that's three, and that is four right here. Now remember that the order they are in right here is going to define which level it starts. So make sure they are in the correct order. So that's all I need over here for my level panel. Now there is one more thing that um, I wanted to do and that we pretty much define the very top here. We need a menu container, something that contains everything but the fade. So what we'll do is we'll create a new UI panel and just make sure it's on the same level as the fade and all the other menu. That is going to be the menu container. Of course, remove the image and let's just put everything beneath the menu container. So everything is now a children of the menu container, except of course, the fade. This way, we're going to be able to move this menu container and actually change which one is being highlighted right now. For some reason, it's not actually moving everything. So we're going to find out why it does that in a moment. But right now, this is all we need. So we have our menu container, we have our new level panel right here. So we're going to go under menu scene, make sure we assign both of these. So menu container is right here. And now the level panel is under level menu. And here it is, that's the level panel. So make sure we assign it as well. So our menu looks like this at the moment, there is two things missing in here. And those are two buttons. So we need to add two more buttons to actually go from one menu to another. So in this case, if we're stuck on this screen, and we want to go back, we need to click somewhere. So say about here, and then it returns us to the main menu screen. What I will be doing right here is head over to the, uh, in this case, that's the level menu, right click, create a new button again. And that's going to be the back button. So what I'll be doing with this back button is I'll simply be dragging it or actually anchor it bottom left or bottom right. And do a minus 50 and a 50 here. Let's make sure it is 200 by 200. Why not? The same exact size as this one with the same exact placement, uh, basically. Let's also make sure it is on the level panel level, or well, I mean, children level in this case. And we're going to be changing the sprite for one arrow. The highlighted sprite is going to be two arrow. And here we go. So we have our first back button. We just need to link it right now. So on the unclick function, we need to have a function for it, which we do not have. So let's quickly head back in the code. Public void on back click. And then we can say something like, uh, what did we write up here? So back button has been clicked. Let's actually do that. Back button has been clicked. And since it is public, we're going to be able to access it directly from the inspector. Let's click on the plus sign at the menu scene here. And let's do on back click. Once we have this first one working, let's duplicate it. So we keep the references. And let's drag this one in the shop menu at the very same level as all of these guys. So this is also back button. So let's rename it like this. And let's anchor it bottom left in this case, and then 50, 50. However, we have the same exact problem as we had over here, it's actually upside down. Well, it's not upside down, but it needs to be flipped. So um, there's actually two ways to go about it. Can I actually do a minus one on the scale? I think I can actually do a minus one on the scale and maybe put it at 250 in X. So let's try this out. Okay, so um, everything should be linked together. Now, the only problem is that we have no navigation working in between those menu, we can only see the first one. And that's pretty much it. So we're going to need to go back into code and just finish just wrapping everything up, making sure our camera goes 
um, towards the left in this case and towards the right in that case. We can do that by going back in our code and actually just um, creating a new function actually. We're gonna go a little bit above that, do a private void, navigate to. So it's gonna be a new function called navigate to and we're gonna take in an int menu index. The menu index is simply going to be 0 for main menu, 1 for play menu, and like say 2 for shop menu. So something we can easily remember. We don't need to keep track of it in an enum. It's going to be really, really simple. So let's do a switch on the menu index in case we're getting um, 0, 1, or 2. So if we get like 34 for some example in really weird example, we're going to resort to default. And default is going to be the same one as 0. So if you get the number zero, or if you get anything else that isn't one or two, you're gonna be doing desired menu position is equal to vector three dot zero. So it resets at the beginning, and the beginning happens to be the main menu at the same time. So let's actually just comment this out as well. So let's do zero and default case is equal to main menu. Now if we get 1, so 1 is equal to the play menu, so let's do case 1, desired menu position is going to equal vector 3 dot right times, uh, we'll do screen dot width in this case. Actually no, we'll do 1280 because that is our reference resolution that we've put in the canvas scaler, so that is what we need to put right here. Uh, you don't need to put the F. So that's if it's case number 1. If it's case number two, that means it would be, so two is equal to shop menu. And we do the same thing, but on the other side. So desired menu position is equal to vector three dot left. We could say left or minus right times 1280. And then we finally break. All right, so that is our navigate to function. Now you realize that I never really move the object. I never really move anything. I just set some vector threes. And the reason is that I want to be having a smooth transition in between one and another. So uh, we're going to be doing that in the update, actually. In the update, we'll add a section for menu navigation. Let's actually add smooth next to it. And we'll do menu container dot anchored position 3D. So we're manually just moving the anchored position is going to equal vector 3 dot lerp in between the current position. So menu container again anchored position 3d and the desired mini position so this is where it actually <laughs> takes place um, and as far as the speed goes I like 0.1 f because it's it's quick it's simple and of course if you want it to be faster you put a higher number if you want it to be slower you can put a slower number but let's actually have a look at it in the game right now I'm going to hit play from the pre-launcher if you're curious, what I do here is I do a control P. I don't actually click on the button. I've got tired of clicking on the button. And now I just realized that <laughs> talking about clicking on button, we did not actually add our navigate to function to anywhere. So what we'll do is we'll head back inside of our code. We'll use our logic right here to um, actually add the navigate to at the proper place. So assuming we're clicking on the play button, we want to head over to one. So navigate to one. If we're clicking on the shop, then navigate to, and then to. And if we're clicking on the back button, that means we're going back to the main menu, so navigate to zero or minus one or whatever number you want. Uh, let's just put zero so we understand what we're doing. And here we go. So since the buttons are already linked, everything should be smooth. And we should now get our sweet uh, transition from one menu to another. And here we go. It's looking pretty good. We also had to test one more thing right here, and it is the buttons right there. Do they have the function linked to them? As you can tell when I click here, I get the selecting level zero. Here that's selecting level one, two, three, four, five. So everything works as expected. The only thing we could do right now to make this look okay, I guess, is to turn off the image or completely remove them if you want um, off those panels. And here you go, now it would actually look super smooth and seamless in the game, so here you go. And that is how we created our menu. Now we're gonna keep working on the menu a little bit. We still have a lot of things to do. We still have a lot of 
um, things to set in there, of course, have the player add all that kind of stuff. So guys, stay tuned. And if you enjoyed the video, if you liked the video, then please leave a like down there on the video, share it with your friends, share the tutorial with your friends. I'm trying my best to show you guys how to make those games and also just have fun while doing it. Um, if you can help me back in return, I would really appreciate it. So leave a like, share the video, leave a comment, um, tell me about your day and all that kind of good stuff. So guys, thank you so much for watching and I will be seeing you in the next tutorial.